guys, welcome back to Ashar Books. So I first just wanted to say I hope everybody had a lovely holiday season and got to spend it with their family and their friends and got some good like quality family and friend time in. I definitely did and it was fabulous, um, which is also why I've been a little MIA lately, but I'm back today with a super exciting video and my personal favorite video to do every year, but also like the most difficult video to do, which is my favorite books of 2019. I love making this video every year. I think we all do. And I actually had a really hard time, kind of as per usual, putting this list together because I read over 100 books last year. So trying to narrow that down to like 10 to 12 was a little difficult, but I think I've managed I have cheated slightly, if you want to call it cheating, um, because I did include some series on here if I read like most of the series. Um, I did put the series rather than just like the one book that I read. So these are not going to be in like a ranked order because that would just be impossible for me. So these aren't in order, but they are just my top, I believe there's 11 on this list because I was not able to kick one off to make a 10. Um, so they're just kind of in random order as far as that goes. There are a couple that I might give a little asterisk to that I think would be like one of the top, top reads of the year. So that's kind of the only order they're in, but without further ado, let's look at the books. So my first favorite of the year was Birthday Girl by Penelope Douglas. This was a book that really kind of snuck up on me. Um, I had heard about it for a long time. I really love Penelope Douglas's other books that I had read, um, in her like Until series. Was that what it's called? I think it is. Um, but this one, um, I feel like a lot of us have read. And if you haven't and you want something like super kind of gripping, super kind of like drama filled, but also it's just really fabulous characters, I highly recommend. Um, I just couldn't put this down. I read this one really early on last year and like I think it was January and I still kind of remember it pretty well. Still think about it and I've also reread it. Um, so to me, that's a sign that it's fa like a fabulous book and that it belongs on the list because I just couldn't let it go and it just really kind of stuck with me. The next favorite for the year was Work in Progress by Stacey Hart. Um, I talked about this book a lot near the beginning of 2019 because it is and was then one of my absolute favorites. Again, I picked this one up kind of just spur of the moment. I feel like this year a lot of my favorites were ones that just looked cute, I liked them, I picked them up. There wasn't like a huge thought process going into like picking them. And I think that like made me love them even more because they were such a huge surprise. And I already love Stacey Hart's writing. Um, I've read a lot of her other stuff, not all of it yet, but um, it's fabulous. And this one, I just thought the characters were fabulous. It follows a girl who is writing like a blog. She's a huge reader, but she's dealing with some issues in her personal life and like some anxiety. And then it follows an author who the two of them kind of team up and there's a bit of a marriage of convenience trope in here, hence the cover. Um, but I just, I again, could not put this down. I immediately wanted to reread it after I finished it. And I pretty soon after I read the ebook, went and bought the physical book because I just, I had to have it. And another sign that it belongs on the favorite list. I've read this one a few times now and it's just so utterly adorable that I have to include it on the list. The next one is Beard Science by Penny Reed. So really it's the whole Winston Brothers series on this list because I only, well, I read book one at the end of 2018, but the rest, I've read book two, three, and four this year. Um, but this one is my favorite because it's Cletus and Jennifer's story. And if you've read this series, you will understand my love of Cletus Winston, I feel like. But um, he's just a fabulous character. So is Jennifer. I thought they worked really well together. They're kind of two you wouldn't have put together, but they Penny Reed just made them work. And also Penny Reed just became a favorite author this year in general. Um, if you saw my previous video, I mentioned that I wanted to make sure I finished the series in 2020 because I do have a couple books left. Um, I just, I love this book in general. Cletus is just... Cletus is such an interesting character and an interesting hero. He's definitely not your typical hero, I feel, I think. Um, he's kind of sneaky, he's super smart, he's so like loyal to his family, and I just, I love him. And anytime that he was on the page, like you're glued to it. Um, so yeah, The Winston Brothers is a fabulous series. Penny Reed's writing is so engaging and I just love it. So love this book. My next favorite is Devil's Daughter by Lisa Kleypas. I feel like I can't have a favorite books of the year without a Lisa Kleypas book. And that's just because she's one of my absolute favorite authors, especially historical romance authors. Um, I love her 
eternally and this one is I think the only book I read from her this year because I had pretty much binged a lot of her other stuff previously but this was her new release um, last year and this one was highly anticipated because it involves the daughter of a character from a previous book that is very beloved um, and so this is about Phoebe and her kind of finding love after kind of a tragedy um, when she lost her first husband and I just loved it her and her love interest um, start butting heads in the very beginning of the book and I just I thought it was a perfectly written book I thought it was so fun you got to see all your favorite characters kind of pop up in this one which I'm a huge fan of especially you can read it as a standalone but it's kind of those little like things dropped in there for people who have read um, the rest of the series that makes it so much fun so yeah I love this I always say if you're looking for historical romance um, I always recommend Lisa Kleypas I think her Wallflower series and her Ravenel series are perfect and I always recommend them to people trying to find new historical romance authors. My next favorite is one that I feel like if I had to pick, had to pick like a top one or two, this would probably be it, which is The Simple Wild by K.A. Tucker. And I do not know how I don't have a physical copy of this book. I'm going to try and remedy that like ASAP because I actually read this book from the library, um, but I checked it out like twice because I'm I kind of reread it um, and I love The Simple Wild. I feel like a lot of people have loved this book this year and I am one of them. It was just so good. So I loved every aspect of it. I felt like it was the perfect blend of things in this book. It follows our main character who goes to Alaska after growing up in the city um, to visit her father who she's kind of estranged from because he's sick and there she just kind of gets met with a lot of obstacles obviously you have that like city girl fish out of water in the middle of Alaska which is both entertaining and a lot of hardships um, kind of mixed together um, there's a lot of family love and family dynamics in this book all the kind of like situations that families come across and then also while in Alaska it's a super kind of burly and rough um, pilot named Jonah and their love story was lovely and I really really enjoyed it I loved how K.A. Tucker was able to kind of weave humor um, into these very heartbreaking, serious kind of um, parts of the book. I thought it was really well done because one minute you'd be laughing and you'd be crying. And I think any kind of book that can like emote those kind of emotions is going to be a fabulous read. And I am so excited for the sequel. Like, so excited. I'm, I'm not normally someone who pre-orders books. But I think I'm going to pre-order this one um, because I just cannot wait to have it in my hands. I just can't wait. So if you haven't read Simple Wild, I highly recommend. I think it's just a beautiful romance and probably my favorite of the year if I had to pick. Next are two books that are in the same kind of series, but I just could not figure out which one was my favorite. And that is Pretty Face and The Austin Playbook by Lucy Parker. Um, both of these are so so good I always rave over Lucy Parker and I read both of these this year I actually think I read um one of her other books this year too which I did also really love but these two are my favorites in the series so this is her London celebrity series and they are standalones but they're in the same kind of like world and you see a lot of the other characters kind of pop up here and there and some are related and things like that so I just think Lucy Parker is one of the best contemporary romance authors that's like writing right now I love her writing it's so funny it's so witty her characters are really well developed and in a way that they're both like the heroes are perfect but perfectly flawed and same thing with the heroines they seem like people you would actually know um, which just makes it that much more like engaging of a book um, I love both of these they're so good I, I couldn't pick which one I liked more so um, I put them both on the list so if you haven't picked up Lucy Parker I love her and I think she's doing great great things I just read her new book that came out or is about to come out in January and it's just as good so if you have any the first book is called act like it in the London celebrity series and if you haven't read it I highly suggest picking it up my next favorite is another series and that is the Kate Daniel series by Alona Andrews this is the one I'm currently reading which is technically one from 2020 but um, it was just the one that I had closest to me which is magic binds but I read the first eight books in the series in 2019 and so I had to include it. I loved it. This is an urban fantasy series. I feel like a lot of people have read it but if you're like me and you haven't picked it up yet I think you're gonna love it. If you like urban fantasy, if you like magic, if you like shifters, if you want a really good romance 
trust me it's perfect um, so it's that kind of like each book has a mini conclusion um, of the mystery that's kind of being solved in the book but there's also an overarching kind of theme or plot that's happening throughout um, uh, big chunks of the series I'm almost done I've got this one and one more and I am both really happy and really sad to see it go it's such a good series I flew through these this summer and they had to be on the list my next favorite is a notorious foul by Joanna Shoup Joanna Shoup is another of my favorite historical romance authors and I read a few of her books this year um, but I love the notorious foul the most I think um, I actually have it but I forgot to grab it before this so I'll put a picture up but um, I love this one so her series this one is set in Gilded Age New York so like late 1800s early 1900s and I just think it's such a fascinating era there's a lot of change going on um, and her romances are always really well done so in this one we have a girl who's come over from London with her mother who's trying desperately to marry her off much to her daughter's dismay and the daughter kind of tries to kind of go clear her head goes on a walk and meets her neighbor who is this kind of somewhat closed off and quiet inventor he's super smart and he's also um deaf and so it was really interesting to read about how people were learning sign back then and how people were completely judged and very much so looked down upon for any kind of um like disability whatsoever and I think that's what made it stand out because the love story was great and I loved it, but it was kind of all the other little pieces um, of the story and the time period that really sucked me in. So I loved The Notorious Vow. It was really, really fabulous. Next favorite was Bringing Down the Duke by Evie Dunmore. This one has been everywhere this year and I am one of the people who absolutely loved it. I thought it was really well done. It was such a good historical and I believe this is Evie Dunmore's first book. And it was such a good debut um, if it was which I'm pretty sure it was um, this book has a lot going on with it. it has a girl who's trying to kind of kind of rise above where she was at she's trying to get education she's trying to kind of work right fight <laughs> She's kind of trying to fight for women's rights and things like that. There's a lot going on. There's a fabulous love story that had a lot of kind of intricacies in it. A lot of things, these this obstacles this couple had to overcome. And I just thought it was so well done. Um, I stayed up till like 2 a.m. reading this book. And any book that can make me stay up that late because I'm normally someone who goes to bed at like 10 p.m. or 9 p.m. Um, is a great book and I just I loved it. I love the cover. I love the kind of marketing behind this book. I think that cover has kind of maybe persuaded some people to pick up a historical that maybe wouldn't have before which I think is great and I think you know giving something a try is always a good thing. My next favorite is another series and that is the Stalking Jack the Ripper series. So I read all of them except for the first one in 2019. This is the third one just because I like this cover so I thought I'd hold this one up um, which is um, Escaping from Houdini. Not actually my favorite book in the series but I gave all of the books in the series either a five or a four star and um, I love it. I finished the series this year and it was one of my favorite YA series I've read maybe ever but especially recently I've been a lot more picky with my YA and this one just made the cut. It was so good. The kind of mystery aspect, the kind of medical aspect was great. It was creepy. It's a perfect read for fall but really anytime. And then the romance between Audrey Rose and Thomas Cresswell was just so swoony. I just loved it like I, it was so good and they, it was really well done because even though they're young characters they're also very mature and put in very kind of grown-up situations and so I felt like the romance felt like that to me it didn't feel like a super young romance I and mean, they are they're over 18 and or in part of the book and part of the series so I just thought it was really well done for me I was so captured by the series and I couldn't wait to read the next one. Next to last favorite is Rustic Hearts by Amber Kelly. I love this book and this was an utter surprise. I picked it up I believe after seeing Shelby talk about it from Shelby Taggart Reads um, and she loved it as well and I it was such a delight. It's a small town romance. It's an author I hadn't read before but for sure will in the future and it's just this girl who's coming back home after a long time away trying to figure out her family situation again trying to figure out where she belongs and again 
I'm a sucker for a good book that has a really cool family dynamic and family dynamics they have to work through because I think it just adds something to the romance. The romance was also great. I love the complete opposite characters kind of falling in love. That's always a trope I love. And I just love this because it was such an utterly perfect surprise and I loved it and I definitely want to read something else by this author. Last favorite I'm going to include on this list, which I believe is actually number 11, but I'm going to put it on anyways, was His Royal Highness by R.S. Gray. Um, I love R.S. Gray. I've talked about her a lot, but this one was probably my favorite she's written. I loved it. It's about a girl who's a theme park princess and her kind of falling in love with um, the grandson of the owner of the park. And there's a lot more to it. Again, really interesting family dynamics and her just kind of figuring out again who she wants to be. I'm a huge Disney fanatic and I think Maybe that's part of why I love this, kind of getting to see the backstory of a theme park was really fun. If you're looking for a contemporary romance that's just really different to me, I hadn't read anything like this, pick it up because I thought it was really fantastic and it's definitely my new favorite R.S. Gray, so I had to include it on the list. All right, guys, so those are my favorite books of 2019. I had such a good reading year and really did just stopped trying to plan and just picked up what I wanted to pick up and I think it went really well. So I'd love to know what some of your favorites were. Are any of these your favorites or what are your favorites? I'd love you love it if you could list a couple down below. Um, let me know what your favorites were for this year. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you soon with another video. Bye!